Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this uh, wonderful Friday the 13th. October 13th, that is, 2023. It's about 11.03 p.m. here, California time. The latest activity shows some movement down into the South Sandwich Trench there. Seeing a little bit of activity kicking up. Also with 3.1 over here around the Turkey area. Let's go ahead and check out the latest movement here. There is that movement down into the South Sandwich Trench, the southern edge here of that subduction zone, about uh, 10 kilometers deep for a 4.8 Moving up north here, one little lonesome earthquake outside of Oklahoma. Well, inside of Oklahoma, outside of Lawton, 1.7, uh, 6 kilometers deep or so. I uh, haven't really seen any major uptick here across the west coast for now. A little spotty activity across the Bay Area, also down in Southern California here. Along the San Jacinto Fault Zone, a little bit of clutter going on around the Rancho Cucamonga area. But for the most part, this is all very typical activity occurring there across the area of the california region alaska area generally quiet aside from some small microquake activity over here around japan we did have a 4.8 coming in here northern edge of the izu trench pretty deep uh, well not super deep but 57 kilometers there into the izu trench for a 4.8 outside of the swarming area if you guys remember that major swarm that's been kicking up here this area is just north of that region. Haven't really seen anything kick back up there. Uh, the big island of Hawaii. Uh, still seeing a little bit of scattered activity out here outside of Kilauea Volcano. Some of this deep, some of it shallow, but for the most part, that swarm has died off. The tilt meter has died down. Not a whole lot of inflation going on there currently at the Kilauea Volcano for now, but still kind of keeping an eye on it. Uh, a little bit of activity here in a linear fashion. All these are deep earthquakes. You can pretty much pinpoint them here. Roughly uh, about 600 kilometers or so below the surface into the Tonga Trench. The latest one of 4.4, 600 kilometers deep for that earthquake. New Zealand, uh, not really seeing anything major going on here. Let me double check the GeoNet servers and see what we have. Uh, doesn't look like a lot. Otherwise, it would pop up here. Uh, 12 hours ago, 2.5. So, aside from that, um, looking at the seismograph stations here, minimal earthquake activity at best there across the New Zealand area for now. Uh, further to the west here, Afghanistan area, the latest one, 4.5 into the deeper regions there of the uh, Afghanistan mountain range. Did see a little bit of activity here in western Afghanistan, shallow earthquake activity. This area did see quite a bit of movement here over the last week, including uh, a couple sixes out there in this area of western Afghanistan. Uh, also around Greece, we did see uh, a 4.1 earthquake coming in just earlier this evening outside of Crete. 10 kilometers deep for that 4.1. The Atlantic Ocean, one earthquake out here in the divergent boundary near the Rick James Ridge. It's a 4.6 earlier this morning. We'll just kind of continue to watch this and see how it plays out. Space weather activity here. Looking at, uh, well, it looks like we're recovering from a little, almost an M flare here within the last few minutes or so. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see if this is going to key up. Uh, looks like we did peek out into the M flare category just slightly. Maybe an M1 point. Uh, it looks like it did peek out there into the M, M flare category. Um, or at least close to it. I can already see which sunspot is the culprit. That's going to be down here across the southwestern limb of the sun. Notice that bright feature there kicking off. And uh, that's going to be coming from sunspot number, let's see what we got here, 3460. Notice a little bit of complex structure there within that uh, little core. Close proximity there to one another. It's almost an M flare from this area. We do have a growing sunspot here on the eastern limb of the sun. We'll watch this here in the coming hours and days. Also a new sunspot being welcomed out there across the eastern limb. Keep an eye on that as well. Um, overall threat for the most part, 95% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25, X flare around 1% chance he dropped these due to the lower 
elevated uh, complexity there within those sunspot cores. Not a whole lot going on there for the auroras for now. And uh, we'll just kind of continue to watch that and see how this plays out. All right, folks, tomorrow. Tomorrow's kind of a big event right here. Um, you know, it's something that probably takes place more often than we think. That's the eclipse of the sun. Um, and this is going to be an annular eclipse, basically a ring of fire type eclipse here. And uh, this is the totality line for the most part there, the uh, maximum uh, viewing area from Eugene, Elko, down into Albuquerque, New Mexico, Roswell, uh, Roswell, New Mexico as well, Carryville, uh, Midland area out here in Texas as well, Corpus Christi. So these areas are in some major, or at least this uh, eclipse here is in some major populated regions. Now here is the maximum obscurity. Um, as you can see, this path right here, path of annular solar eclipse, is going to be the ring of fire. That's going to be the best viewing out here in this red line. Areas outside of that, we're looking at this type of um, eclipse. Uh, it's it's almost a total eclipse there, 80%. Uh, here in Northern California, outside of Chico, we're expecting about 82% or so. Uh, and this is going to cover a wide portion here of the states, even areas in the south here. Mexico, Honduras area getting in on quite a bit of activity as well. South America, 90% uh, chance. Path of annular solar eclipse right here. So this is a kind of a big deal. Here's some mountain, or here's some time frames, I should say. Eugene, Oregon, the partial eclipse begins around 8 in the morning, Pacific time here. This is local time. Uh, and this is going to be the maximum viewing time, maximum peak time there when the sun is most uh, obscured, 9.16 a.m., 9.18, somewhere around there. Um, so look for that around Eugene, Alturas, Battle Mountain, Nevada, uh, San Antonio, Texas here, 1023 local time. The, uh, the partial eclipse begins. This is where the moon uh, basically begins to eclipse the sun. And you get maximum here around 1154 a.m. Just before noon, central daylight time. So um, I, I think it's going to be cool. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I have to say that here in Northern California, we are going to be in the dead zone in terms of being able to view this eclipse, unfortunately. So I know Alturas was up here. It looks like there's going to be quite a few clouds up here in the northeastern area of California. Uh, also, unfortunately, out here in Winnemucca as well, I had planned on taking the six and a half hour trip out here to live stream this, but uh, I have to weigh my options here. Do I spend a bunch of money to go out there to view a bunch of clouds and not see the eclipse? So this put a damper on my plans here for tomorrow. So I'm going to barbecue a brisket tomorrow instead. <laughs> but I still will be up uh, here in the morning. Um, I'm going to get up pretty early uh, and see what I can do as far as live streaming this event goes. 7 a.m. We got cloud cover all over Northern California. Roughly around 9 a.m. or so. Uh, there's still quite a bit. But I'm going to be up. I want to see if we at least have some sunshine out there tomorrow, some peaks in the clouds in order to see this uh, maximum um, solar eclipse here in Northern California. Winnemucca area, right around the peak time, you're looking at quite a few clouds rolling in the, your area. Uh, Ely, Nevada clear, uh, Arizona, New Mexico. A little bit of cloud cover out here in the, well, just east of Albuquerque. Uh, but you guys may be in the clear right around the time of maximum uh, eclipse time, uh, eclipse goes uh, down in Texas. Beautiful clear skies. You guys are in for quite a treat in terms of seeing that Pacific Ring of Fire, or uh, Pacific, not the Pacific, but the um, the eclipse, the solar eclipse. Well, they call it a Ring of Fire, right? I'm so associated with earthquakes when it comes to the Pacific Ring of Fire, uh, so that's kind of just mingering into each other. But uh, we'll keep an eye on this. I, I don't think we're going to have super clear skies out here for Northern California. There is a massive low pressure system building up here. And it's continuing to funnel in moisture here to the West Coast. Haven't really seen too much rainfall. We've seen a lot of clouds today. 
and uh, we only got up to about 69 degrees here for a daytime high and uh, that looks to be the case tomorrow as well so we'll just see how it goes in the morning uh, I'm gonna be up I'll, I will live stream regardless uh, but there's a, a couple options here if I have clear skies I'll be live streaming the Eclipse with a special scope that I bought for this event and um, if we have cloud cover I'll probably just live stream out here on my cell phone to show you guys how dark it is uh, in mid-morning or so gonna be gonna be kind of cool to see uh, you know darkness around 930 or so in the morning when it should be light Either way, oh, you know, it's just one of those things here. I love the weather, so I'm not really going to complain too much about the coolness out here. Uh, but I was definitely looking forward to it. All right. Um, I was just looking at the last month here of El Nino. Now, we have uh, a pretty strong El Nino event going on this year. Um, it's peaking. Uh, I think it's supposed to last through uh, this winter. And there's a couple different uh, things I'm watching here. There's a very strong warm water out here across the Pacific Ocean aimed right at the West Coast. Now this could spell uh, a little bit of potential for some extreme weather out here in the California West Coast area come winter time. This is when our storms begin, our rainy season begins. So uh, this could enhance the jet stream out here across the West Coast. There's a little bit of coolness out here across Hawaii over the last month or so. Uh, the weekly chart out here um, shows a little bit cooling down here across the northern uh, Pacific Ocean here in the Gulf of Alaska, but still have a pretty warm area out here uh, aimed at the California region. So. We'll continue to watch that. Of course, ocean water temperatures play a big part on how big of a winter we have out here along the West Coast. Uh, pretty warm, it looks like, around the Bay Area in the last week or so. Yearly pattern. Um, that's just a year. But still warmer waters out here in the typical El Nino zones. Pretty warm. All right. Well, I'm going to jump off here, folks. Got to get up somewhat early in the morning. And um, if you have any awesome photos that you want to share here on the channel for the viewers, please do not hesitate to send them to the Earthmaster Mail. It's called earthmastermail at gmail.com. That's my email here. Uh, send me your location um, and whatnot. Uh, and we'll show it here on the, the uh, update video tomorrow. If you have any cool images, we'd love to show them here to the viewers. So get those images up if you can tomorrow. And uh, we'll catch you guys back here in the morning. One way or the other, if it's just an update or if it's a live stream here of the solar eclipse. Um, we'll see how it goes. Either way, alarm clock is set. I'll be up. Take care, folks. We'll catch you guys back here a little bit later.